A makeshift berthing adapter hissing out atmosphere more or less sealed the access between the platform's underbelly and the icy tunnel below. It looked a tight fit. Desperately low on oxygen, Regal unplugged his helmet, hoping the connector would not explode. Regal entered the tunnel, leaving the slumbering platform behind. He looked down at the darkness and did calculations on how much leg power he needed to absorb the fall. Just do it. He scolded himself and let go. Regal dropped, picking up speed. The air froze his lungs while noxious carbon monoxide and ammonia left an unmistakable stench. He anticipated the extreme cold but hoped the pressurized air sustained by the platform above would be balanced enough to keep conditions safe. Too warm and the frozen gases would overwhelm and poison the breathable air. He continued descending, using his arms to scrape against the frosty wall, successfully slowing his flight until he began crawling down. When he hit the bottom, the tunnel, large enough to crouch in, stretched out into the darkness, horizontally. The ground, covered in ankle-deep icy slush, felt different under his boot. Slippery. He pressed ahead, paying more and more attention to the ground surface. When he came across an outcrop he put his hand to it. Not ice rock aggregate, but solid rock. Even the surface underneath his feet felt rough and serrated. Regal lit the wall with his sidereal tool. The white beam of light revealed an aggregation of more reddish rock than water ice. A rocky nucleus. We were wrong about everything. This thing is a goddamn centaur. It began to make sense. A cross between asteroids and comets, these SSSBs were heavier in mass. The Lapith's crew were using the wrong trajectory calculations. The nuke pump ran out of frozen ice and blew up. But the answers uncovered more questions. Regal continued along the rock shaft, its surface brittle and crumbling in places. His heart pumped hard, missing a beat each time he slipped on sludge. His mind raced with questions of grand conspiracies, of sickening allegations. Why would GI Corp go to the expense to send a centaur to Venus? And if Venus wasn't the intended destination, why the hell would they threaten Earthsiders? The corporate politics of it all did not make sense. He slid into a wider space, a cave, lit indigo by a circle of blue sticks pegged around a massive hatch. A low, heavy hum greeted his ears, its bass frequency working its way into the center of his brain. It's open. Regal did not dither. He looked inside. A colossal black ball moved gradually, purposely around a mirror-finished, ribbed spherical interior. Opposite, another hatch, closed but operable judging by the green-lit touch button at its center. A magnetic control movement gyroscope, Regal kicked himself for not factoring in this device, this was how the crew decided to get back inside. But the triumph subsided when he spotted dark, wet-looking patches on the interior surface. In the blue ambience he could not make out the color, but he knew what it was. The smear and splatter patterns were unmistakable. Suddenly the ball increased its velocity, spinning in a wild, powerful orbit around the sphere. Regal felt the intensity. He swore he could feel the small planetoid underneath his feet shift a little, then the gyroscope settled back to normal speed. There's my murder weapon. As he stood there, dumbfounded, the ball spun again, resettled, and then spun again, at seemingly random intervals. He knew what to do, but the courage to implement his new plan seeped away as fast as heat escaped from his body. Regal turned to head back into the tunnel. He would go back up to the platform, find some kind of material, return to the gyroscope and toss it inside, the sensors should trigger an alarm and the system should shut down to allow the Envirobots to clean out the debris. That's how the remains of the crew ended up back at the command module. Hesper. But why dump the bodies in the command module and not the trash bay Regal could not say, nor offer an explanation? That mystery would have to wait. His main priority was making contact with the GI Corp base on Deimos. Warn them as best he could. Regal stopped dead in his tracks. There was no way to get back up to the platform. He did not even bother checking. Regal knew the tunnel was too small for him to climb back up, even with low gravity taken into account. Resolved not to succumb to fear, 
he trekked back to the gyroscope. The only choice left for him was to make a dive for the hatch door. When he stood at the entry the rumbling vibrated his chest. He hoped the green light indicated that the opposite hatch was unlocked. He prayed that Hesper was innocent, just a blind, deaf mute, clueless of the situation at hand. He gambled that the nav system was sending out random commands to the gyroscope, that it was not pre-programmed for something far more sinister. Regal glared at the dark monstrous ball, and hoped and prayed one more time.